Hey, True Believers, England Teen here with another episode of Comic Book Origins, and this time we're looking at Harley Quinn. Yeah, again, but this time we're actually checking out her first incontinuity appearance. And I don't know what else could I say about Harley Quinn I didn't say in the first video. We even showed her animated first appearance. However, I don't know if I mentioned that she was supposed to be a one-off character. Just one episode. She was supposed to be a riff on all the girls that were in the gangs in the 1966 Batman TV show. And Paul Dini was sick at home and he was watching Days of Our Lives. There's Arlene Sorkin doing a fantasy sequence in a Harlequin hat. And he was friends with her, so he goes, hey, look, I've got an idea. She took influences from uh, Adelaide from Guys and Dolls and uh, Ellen Green from Little Shop of Horrors. And boom, Harley Quinn was born. This was a commissioned video. Thank you very much to Christy Miller for that. And I am kind of putting a kibosh on uh, commissions right now until I'm all caught up. And uh, as all that said, let's get this party started. As usual, I go over the covers first. And dude, this is an iconic one, man. This, this is a poster on every Harley Quinn and Joker fans' walls, really. Come on. What isn't there to like about this? I love the Jack Nicholson influence in the Joker as well. Damn, what a beautiful cover. And it's just like, it, it can't be done over anything other than that black background, really. Just freaking beautiful. Batman Harley Quinn, written by Paul Dini, penciled by Yavel Gachet, sorry for butchering that, inked by Aaron Saud, lettered by Willie Schubert, colored and separated by Richard and Tanya Hori. And Batman was created by Bill Finger and Bob Kane. The book opens as we see Ivy driving a plant horse driven carriage carrying fruit. Whoa, Marigold, it's bad enough Batman forces me to deliver produce to Gotham's starving hordes. Now apparently I'll have to play trash collector to do it, she says as she comes across a missile in a big old trash pile so she begins to clean up the trash and move stuff aside so she could get through when all of a sudden she sees a red hand hey lady could you move that cross beam off my sternum please oh that's better yeah we're cooking now baby try to blow me up will you i'm not by the way trying the accent it ain't gonna happen i nope nope you guys know me in accents well get ready to kiss your chalk white butt goodbye clown i'm coming for you and we see Harley Quinn fall to the floor. Hmm. Interesting, Ivy says. What do you think, girl? She's in pretty rotten shape. New leaves off my bush if she lives or dies. Uh, phrasing? But Gotham's been flat out dismal these nights, and a girl has to take her fun where she finds it. <laughs> phrasing. So Ivy packs her up into the old uh, cart there and says, Home, Marigold, and later... Harley wakes up. No, Puddin, don't, no! Good morning, Dr. Quinzel. I know you, Poison Ivy. That's right, I thought I recognized you under that silly costume. You were one of the hotshot young doctors from Arkham Asylum. So Harley Quinn basically says she doesn't want to live anymore, and Ivy's like, wait a second, you're acting irrationally and out of depression, and so there's a story here, I want to hear it. And we basically get the same Harley Quinn origin that we know from, well, the first go around mad love and all that kind of stuff where harley quinn was a uh, psychiatrist over at arkham asylum and she falls in love with the joker and she is the reason by the way and she even admits right here that this she's the reason why joker could escape arkham very easily of course she gets caught and she's committed to arkham herself and she's so in love with the joker she's convinced that any moment now he's going to come and break her out of the the prison and she says, days turned into weeks, weeks turned into months, when all of a sudden, the door opened for some reason. There was a big rumbling, and the place looked exactly like an earthquake broke through it. And I guess, you know, of course, this whole story took place during No Man's Land. So obviously, the, uh, the earthquake caused her to be set free. And so she managed to get a, an Arkham van, drive it into town, which, if you think about the damage the earthquake caused that's a feat in itself and while she's there someone says hey are you a doctor she goes, i took a couple of years of medical school but not very much and she noticed there the guys she needs to look over had grins on her face so she's like where did this the guy that uh, did this and 
He said he ransacked the store for supplies and she gets excited and runs off to go find the Joker and ends up at a clothing store, a costume shop, and decides, okay, she needs to get a new look and after a few tries gets the classic Harley Quinn costume. I now knew the Joker was looking for supplies. Word on the street said if anyone had the skinny on goods coming into Gotham, it would be... Ozzy, old pal. I knew you'd be flying high even in the face of this urban blight. Civilization falls and the rabble tears itself apart for the scraps, but still the penguin richly feathers his nest. Joker. You'll pardon me for cutting short this meeting of mutual admiration society, but I'm a busy man and now... What a quinky dink I'm looking to set up business again, too. I know I could count on my bosom chum, Waswald, to loan me the few basics I need to get started. Just odds and ends, really. Food, water, gasoline, guns, ammo, a selection of the more powerful explosives, a couple of generators. I believe, old friend, the immortal bard said it best. Neither a borrower nor a lender be these days. I'm running a strictly barter operation. I'm sure you'll advance me credit, right, my brother? The rules of commerce have changed since the quake, Pally. I can't afford charity, nor can I waste time with beggars with nothing to trade. Why, Pangers, if it's a trade you want, the boys and I will be happy to exchange our lead for your gold. All I wanted was a leg up in reestablishing myself, but if you're going to be a piggy... Ahem. Speaking of legs, check out these gams, Puddin'. The voice is familiar. And while Joker admits that... He recognizes the voice but can't quite place the face. Harley Quinn basically beats the teetotal hell out of the Joker, starting a big old fight between everybody. A most timely diversion, my mysterious Mount Bank. And then he t Joker turns his attention to Harley Quinn. I have the strangest feeling we've met before. Of course we have, Puddin. I'm the gal who's going to put you back on top, and one of Joker's henchmen points a gun at her. Okay, playtime's over, Cookie. You want me to snuff her out, boss? Harley slaps him with a rubber chicken. Excuse me, with bricks in it. Excuse me, but no one's talking to you. Why, bless my soul, I'd recognize that bedside manner anywhere. It's dear Daffy Dr. Quinzel, running away to join my own little circus. Bingo, Mr. Jayen. I'm all set to go once Chubby coughs up the goods. Dear lady, as you ask so nicely, how can I deny you? The penguin says. So the Joker gives her a good job and a pat on the head, and she feels, okay, well, uh, since Joker's saying they have to be mobile, she needs to go out and search for a new hideout. I knew the sooner Mr. J was in a new hideout, the more time he'd have to spend with me, so the very next day I went house hunting. The tunnel of love at the old dockside amusement park seemed perfect. Of course, the current tenants had to go, and all things considered, they took their eviction well, she says as she's setting the old tenants on fire. The place was a real fixer-upper, but it had great potential. I threw myself into it, determined to spare no expense, nor overlook any detail, and we see she's painting Joker faces all over the places. Two weeks later, I brought the gang by for a grand unveiling. Mr. J never stopped laughing as we sailed through the canal, and we see he's looking dead face. And I think the boys liked it too. At last we arrived at our love nest. And when he saw how I had transformed the place, Mr. J was overcome with delight. You should have heard him rave. Doable. I gotta say I dig panels like this. Or even pages considering, you know, what she said about him being elated. I think that this shows that it's more than just a toxic relationship. As a lot of people try to paint the relationship between Joker and Harley. It's more that she's got a psychosis. It may be even just this uh, need to be loved that goes incredibly wrong, but it shows it's more than just your average toxic relationship. And we get even more of that in the next page when she's describing life in the clubhouse, basically, and how the guys, of course, they get less than the two, the Joker and Harley, and that even in the most violent of situations, she sees him as a romantic. And then Harley says that... In the coming nights, there was one that changed everything, and we see Joker negotiating with a gunman that he wants him on his side, and he offers his right hand of uh, friendship, but the left hand was filled with deceit and a buzzer that killed him. So he strings the guy up, puts a fa Joker face on him so he could warn everybody that this is actually Joker territory, and then he gets news. 
Joker's told that the Batman is in town. He actually is uh, on a warehouse very close. And Joker says, I need a distraction. And Harley Quinn uh, says, I'm on it. And she flips out. And Joker says, now that's a gal after my own heart with a razor. Sure enough, the bat was there all right. Big as life and twice as gruesome, Harley tells Ivy. As I knew he was the shy type, I took it upon myself to make introductions. Hey there, hi there, ho there. Evening, Batman. We've never actually met, but we have mutual friends. The name is Harley Quinn. I know you, the demented therapist who thinks she's in love with the Joker. Hi. Another stiff who says Mr. J is no good for me. Please, heard it all before. And in spite of the Batman's warnings that she should get out of here, she decides to attack Batman with a streamer bomb. Yells, psych out, and then tries to hit him, but Batman pretty much takes her down pretty easy. You're hiding him. Where is he? But if I tell you, it'll spoil all the fun. Besides, B-Man, you play too rough. I'm going home. Oh, and I'd get rid of those tassels if I were you. And we see Batman throw them just before they exploded in what could possibly be the worst incontinuity Batman panel I've seen in a long time. He looks he looks cartoonish here. It's like they decided to draw him. Like, it, it's just bad. Harley makes her escape from Batman and we see Joker and his boys running. Remind me to send Harley some flowers once Batman's done using her for a punching bag. We're leaving her? Why no, Rollo? We're going to scrap our carefully laid plans and go duke it out with a bat, all for the sake of one silly little Miss Me Puddin'? Pumpkin Pie, we were just going to look for you. I was a happy, happy girl, Harley tells Poison Ivy. Which, not for nothing, we see Batman watch her run away. He is Batman after all, and he knows she's probably going to go see the Joker, so... Why not follow here? I'm just saying maybe to go find the Joker. You know, no need to end pursuit now. The night's not over. So Harley Quinn tries to convince Poison Ivy that both Joker and her went home and had a nice romantic and sexy evening. But Poison Ivy says, yeah, the one thing Joker's not is sexy. And then Harley Quinn tells of the next morning when she wakes up, the Joker's nowhere to be found. But there's instructions to go to the rocket ride at the fair. And when Harley Quinn enters said rocket ride, it begins to blast off and the Joker pops on and says, Hey, Harley, this has been really fun and you've made me feel, you know, like I'm a couple again. You gave me some good feelings. And I hate those feelings and they're distracting me from getting mine in Gotham. And that's basically his entire speech. So he says, Farewell, my sweet Harley Quinn. I will mourn you. <laughs> she yells, You lousy creep, slimy f pasty faced rat i'll rip your lungs out you lion sack of but then she notices exactly how much trouble she's in and that she's uh, about to crash so she tries to steer it that's the park down there great big lake lots of soft cushy trees plenty of places to land this baby nice and easy and of course she crashes into a stone statue and there she tells poison ivy and now you know when uh, you know we're right here this is where it got me and uh, Poison Ivy's like, oh, sounds like you want to get even. You got that right. I got scores to settle with the Joker and the Batman and everyone else who's been ramming grief down my throat. And then that's when we see Poison Ivy ram something down her throat. That was ranked. What'd you do that for? A necessary precaution. I'm not called Poison Ivy for nothing, and anyone who spends a lot of time around me will pick up something nasty if they're not properly Im immunized. And Harley's anger lasts just a little bit, and then she realizes that, holy Toledo, she's got extra speed, extra strength, extra dexterity. Not only has your body's resistance to toxins been seriously upped, so has your natural strength and agility, Ivy says. Whoa, get a load of me! I got me some powers, baby! Now calm down, Cupcake. You're not going to be giving Superman any sleepless nights. All I've done is given you a little edge. How come? Partially because it amused me to do so. But also, I sympathize with you, given your all to a man who used and betrayed you. Now I've enabled you with the means to strike back, not only at Joker, but at Batman too. He's generously allowed me to remain free as long as I play Farmer Girl for Gotham. Under our truce, I can't raise a hand against him, but you're not bound by those terms. I gotcha. I thought you might. Women be scheming, boy. Women be scheming. So Harley Quinn promises to put a whooping on both Joker and Batman 
she's like, hey, I gotta find a way to get Batman's attention, and she creates her own little kind of bird-looking upside-down thing in the sky with the skylight. You get it. Like her own bat signal. So Batman shows up and says, I'm going to turn you into Gordon. She's like, oh, no, you don't want to do that because I could tell you where the Joker is. And he's not quite believing her, saying, why? Not the much. He just tried to kill me. That's all. So you've discovered his henchman retirement program. And all the bad guys say you've got no sense of humor. I don't have time for this. Are you going to come quietly or... Well, well, I mean, at this time, the Joker hurt me, and I want him to pay. Don't forget, I've been on the inside. I know what he has planned, and brother, if you thought Gotham was ill and now, just wait. And so, Harley begins to tell Batman Joker's plans. Mr. Jace had a ship container of medical supplies smuggled into Gotham. He's secretly putting word on the street about the location. Naturally, relief workers all over the city will be trying to get the goods. Mr. Jace is going to wait until they start dispensing the stuff to the needy. Then, boom, he'll blow the whole thing via remote from his hideout. Just a little giggle to remind people he's still alive. I'd be insane to trust you, so I'm not going to accompany you anyplace. Take this. That'll tell me where you are, and I can follow at my own discretion. If your story checks out, I'll take care of the Joker, but you're not to interfere. So Batman leaves Harley, and we see Joker in his hideout with his boys, and he's saying, hey, today we're just going to relax, have a few beers, and chat. So he asks one of his men, oh, well, you know, what do you think? You've got a special lady at home. What is she, an actress, a model? And he says, dancer, and he begins to talk, and then he begins to ramble, and then he begins to go on, and blam! Too much information, Ron. So Joker calls for a beer run, which basically all of his men volunteer to go on, and we see outside Batman and Harley Quinn are making their way into Joker's hideout. And while the boys are drinking one to Ron, we see Harley Quinn sneak up and throw something at him. They pick up, it looks like Batman's tracer, and they're like, you know, what the hell is this? And that's when Batman drops down and beats the teetotal hell out of him. You see, Ron, the thing is, is you're too wrapped up in your own problems. Mind you, I'm no expert, but it seems to me women like men who listen to them. Is that right? Well, listen to this, Puddin'. She says as she throws a whole bunch of Joker's goons at him and then begins to basically jump on top of him and fight him. It's the sound of me breaking every lion bone in your body, and she begins to punch him. Woo! You've been working out, Harl. Yeah, it's the new me. Like it? Not particularly. Ah, spoil sport. And he begins to try to punch her, but she's bouncing around. Hold still, baby. Daddy can't kill you if you keep jumping around. Oh, well, there's always the standby. And he begins to shoot acid at her. Oh, delightful bouquet, or as you might say with one of your lamoid puns. It's got a real kick. She says she kicks Joker across the room. And now I think just a wee bit more whooping. That's enough, Quinn. Oh, criminy, not him, not now. I told you to stay out of it. Back off, B-Man, I got dibs. You want Mr. J, you gotta go through me. If that's the way you want it, Batman swings a punch and Harley blocks it e easily. What? And Batman throws Harley to the floor, even though she stopped his punch. We see Joker running away, surprised that Harley Quinn is trading punches with a Batman. And just as he thinks he's going to make it, he turns and sees Batman and starts saying, You haven't even paid attention to me through this whole no man's land situation. He grabs two arrows from the Cupids and tries to stab Batman, but stopped. Batman says, and Batman says, Where are the medical supplies? The what now? The supplies you were going to blow up when the relief workers went for them. This is the first I've heard of it. Honest, not a bad gag at all, but not one of mine. And Batman gets hit in the back of the head with a big old mallet. And a whoop for you too, as Batman falls. With Batman down, Harley turns her attention to the Joker and chases him away. At what point did I become the bad guy, Joker asks. He grabs a wrench. Anyone comes near me, they'll get a face full of wrench. Batman or that dizzy skirt or anyone else. Harley Quinn pushes a button and the chamber that Joker's in begins to rise. Going up, we see Harley Quinn at the bottom of the chamber. Sneak, sneak, sneak. And she jumps over the top. Joker swings and she does a flip underneath. I got her. I think I got her. Shouldn't there be a splat? Harley Quinn comes up behind the Joker. And on that cue, she says, and kicks him over the edge. As Joker falls, Harley Quinn jumps after her. Into the line, puddin'. We see Joker is caught onto a girder. 
hanging by one arm. I loved you, but you never cared. All you did was hurt me, throw me away, and laugh at me. Now I'm going to do the same to you. Would it help if I said sorry? Harley Quinn helps the Joker up. They hug, they kiss, and she says, yeah. So Harley and the Joker jump. Very far, actually. The Joker lands on some sort of cushions, and he says, am I dead? Oh, Puddin', this is just the beginning. And then we cut to Batman. Feels like I've been out for hours. Quinn. And we see Quinn and Joker floating away. Bye, Batsy. Don't forget to read the note. Dear B-Man, as you can see, it all worked out happily in the end. True love reigns supreme. And as I'm back with my Joker, swoon once more. By the way, he really liked my joke. Yay, about luring innocent victims and making them go boom. But in this case, he felt he didn't want to waste such a terrific punchline on a total stranger. Plus, he thought that just a container of medical supplies was a bit small. Not as big and splashy as he usually likes. Got to agree with the boy. When he's right, he's right. Well, that's all from me. Have to blow now. See you in the funny papers. And there's a huge explosion. Love, Harley. We cut to Wayne Manor, in this case the Bat Cave. A minor concussion, a lacerated shoulder, powder burns, numerous bruises. Ample evidence that the Joker is indeed back among us. Worse than ever, I dare say, now that he has a partner who shares his sadistic sense of humor. Agreed. Now I'll have twice as much work cut out for me, sir. Certainly you're not going back out there, not in your condition. Gotham remains in turmoil, Alfred. The peacekeepers hide in the mad madhouse while the lunatics rule the street. None of us can rest until the balance is restored, until the Joker, Harley Quinn, and their ilk no longer haunt this city, or the good people still clinging to its ruins. So there you go, gang. That is the very first Harley Quinn in continuity appearance. And I got to tell you, it's damned enjoyable. Paul Dini wrote it. It's, uh, it reads like an episode of the cartoon. At the same time, it's dark enough and stuff happens that is, uh, the, it's right from the actual series. I love this book. I think it's really cool. Of course, the cover's just top notch, as I've said before. But it's really the story that pushes it through. Now, there is a couple of panels where the art is questionable. I pointed out one of them, but there are more throughout it. Uh, however, I don't think it's bad enough to really affect it so much. I don't think, you know, it's a deal breaker at all. Overall, this is, if you could get your hands on it, I know I've seen it going for $100 in the shops without being slabbed and I'm not a big fan of slabbed comics. I've had one or two of these in my time, you know, uh, before she really hit big. It's kind of sad, you know, you, you remember your old collection, but there you go. Anyway, once again, there you have it. The first appearance in continuity of one Miss Harley Quinn. Anyway, gang, let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you like the comic book origins videos, click on either the playlist or uh, the other video that's popping up right now. I think you'll enjoy that as well. Don't forget to click like, share, subscribe, ring that notification bell, making sure that notifications are set on all for both Google and YouTube. And if you don't mind helping out the channel, because this is the way we're trying to make a living, go on over to Ko-Fi or to Patreon, drop a dollar in the till and helps keep the lights on, helps keep making videos for you as this channel's not yet monetized. Like, thank everybody who's already done that to everyone all of the true believers thank you very very much for watching